Heather, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. So I mentioned um, in your bio that your new book is, of course, Confidence Creator. And it's not exactly like you didn't write it as an autobiography, but you tell stories from your life, uh, your life, your career, uh, and all about how you learn to build your own confidence. So why'd you write the book? You know, uh, why is it so important to you? So I got fired. That was really the catalyst <laughs> to why I wrote the book. And in that moment, I had reached the C-suite in corporate America, and I had always been promoted and really had been driven at work. And in that moment, when I lost my job, I felt I had lost everything. I had a major downward spiral, and my confidence hit rock bottom. And I just started doing the things that I've always done, you know, subconsciously. I didn't think about it, but I always know, create a plan and mm. let's focus on a small window, 30 days. And what do I want to look like? in thir I started implementing all of these tactics and strategies that I've always used in business and applied them essentially to building confidence. And I had been doing this for a while and not realizing it. So when I sat down and just started writing, I didn't know what I was going to write at first. It, it really started formulating. And when I realized, I took a step back and said, I think I have a book on confidence here. I've got to come up with something unique. You know, you have to have a unique value proposition right. in, in any, you know, endeavor you're taking on. So I thought, you know, there's lots of books that are preachy telling you do this and do that. Why don't I take it from the angle? Here are my lowest moments and here's how I struggled but here's how I learned to bounce back from it. And so that was my UVP on the book. And that's how Confidence Creator came to be. I love that. And um, just to, to, to highlight this for the listeners, I'm a big believer in unique value propositions, unique selling propositions if you're selling. And whether you're trying to position yourself for a job, whether you're an author writing a book, whether you're an entrepreneur, whatever it is, like I often come back and it's like, okay, what is the unique offer here? You know, how is this or how am I different than any other? So it's interesting that you realize that early uh, in the process yourself. And, and let's start because you say in your book that, uh, you, you well, I, I won't give it away exactly. I want to hear your words, but you say, you know, you identify the number one enemy when it comes to hurting confidence. Who's the number one enemy? So that person, that thing can be different for different people. And I want everyone to know that we all are unique. Our struggles are unique. However, we're much more similar than you would imagine. Right. So for me, recently, a year, two years ago, I had a villain in my life. Mm -hmm. And that villain was my number one enemy. Now that I'm removed from the situation, I see that. Now, take go back 10 years in my life. I used to be the number one enemy for myself because I would run a really negative tape in my head, basically saying, I can't believe you blew that. You're an idiot. Why did you do that? They're looking at you. You look fat. Whatever negative story I was telling myself, it would run all day long. And you're listening to yourself mm. more than anyone else. So 10 years ago, it was me. Yeah. I turned that around. I changed that dialogue. I ran a new tape and it worked for me and I benefited from it. And then, you know, a number of different things happened. And years later, it ended up that I had allowed a villain to come into my life. And the minute I fired that villain from my life, I took off. So, I mean, this goes right into, you know, the fall of, well, you know, how do we start to boost our confidence? And let me just pick up with what you said, because you said the word allowed, like you allowed the villain, you allowed that person to kind of have that power. So I mean, how did you recognize that you had done that? And then how do you take that power away? I didn't. I didn't recognize. So this is hindsight now. You know, I'm I'm basically the Monday morning quarterback, you know, talking about the game last night. But when I look back, I see that was my challenge. This person actually fired me. Mm. So she she thought she fired me that day. What I learned was I fired the villain from my life. And it took not a long time. It was the first couple of weeks that I just started noticing having that space and being away from someone that was passive aggressive to me, that would walk into meetings and pretend I wasn't there, <laughs> that would give me these negative looks as though what I'm saying was horrible and not adding value, really was diminishing my confidence over time 
but I was not aware of it. I knew I felt uncomfortable around her. I knew right. that we didn't like each other, but I thought, well, this is corporate America. I've got to make it work. It's my job. I've been here 14 years. And, you know, that that moment when I got fired, I was able to pick my head up and I suggest this to everyone. Pick your head up right now and just look around and say, what is it that I really want to do with my life? You know, what is it that I really want to be? Because so often we can get in that rut that I was in that, well, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is all I know to do. This is my job. And what I've learned since then is your unique skills and talents will make you successful no matter where you go. You don't have to be at that company, at that job, or in that industry. You can literally, like me, go from being a chief revenue officer of a radio company to a year later becoming a best-selling author, which I didn't realize there are no lanes. You know, you can right. just go for it and, and you can make it work for you. I love that. I, it made me uh, think back to a, a guest I had on the show. I think it was almost a year ago. And she was talking about um, being fearless and doing career changes. And she said, it seems like everybody feels like if you lose the job you have now, you're going to be living in that van down by the river. <laughs> like there, there's nothing Tommy in between. Yes, yes. <laughs> right? Nothing in between. And um, and yet, of course, like you said, all you know, you might be taken out of your current job situation, but you've got all the talents and skills and connections and everything else that you have while you're there. Odds of ending up down uh, washing your clothes in the river are very low. <laughs> Absolutely. But when your confidence is low, that's the perspective that you t that you enable yourself to take. Right. You know, it's more difficult. So for me, focusing on building the confidence back up is what allowed me to get to a place where I said, you know what, in the past, I've been able to see fear, face it and, and go right through it. And I succeeded. OK, I'm betting on me again. But it really took some, you know, some process for me to get there. What about when the villain when, when I am the villain, meaning, you know, that negative self-talk, that that negative loop going on and on. How do I interrupt that pattern? How do, or what do I do to turn that around? So the first thing that worked for me was I started focusing on gratitude. I would write down three things a day that I was grateful for every morning. And I made I, I tackled this for a 30 day plan. You know, this is what I'm going to do for 30 days. I can make myself do this. And I promise you, if you do this for one week, you will see a shift in how you think, how you feel and how you perceive things around you. So that's number one. Number two, I used to write notes on the bottom of my shoes, on my heels. Um, I can do this. I am enough. Whatever message I needed to hear. So that way, during the day, things are going to happen. You're going to have challenges and your confidence might dip because it's not static. And I would look down and just remind, I could help myself in that moment when I was in a better mindset the day before, right. I left myself a tip and a note and I was able to access that the next day. I would do the same thing with my phone, my computer. I have pop-up messaging that shows up different poems that really inspire me, different moments where I've achieved and feel really proud. And so accessing those reminders reminders and setting those safety nets for myself also allows me to feel better about me because I'm being part of the solution to solving my own problems. Yeah, it's amazing. Now, I can't say that I've ever written on the bottom of my heels, but every morning <laughs> still, I like to start with an attitude of gratitude. And I think of three things that I am grateful for. And Sometimes it's silly stuff like I'm really grateful for this cup of coffee or sometimes it's just that I've I'm healthy or my kids, whatever, whatever it is. But I think that gratitude practice really is one of those things that can change lives. Just that one idea. I think that's great. It does. So you, you also write in your book that like, I love, you have some great phrases. You say your vibe attracts your tribe. What do you mean? So when you're down and in a low place in your life, and we've all been there, whether it was the recession or if you've been divorced or, you know, it can be a, or fired, a number of different life experiences, everyone has their low moments. Typically, when you get in those spaces and you're feeling low, that's what you're putting out to the world and showing the world. And suddenly our outer appearance starts to reflect that and you're not dressing, you know, mm. as powerful. Maybe you're not taking the time to do your hair. Maybe you're saying it's not worth it. I, I'm too busy and I can't put myself first. And slowly your whole entire aura and entity has 
transitioned in some way. You don't notice it because you're going through it every day, but the rest of the world does. And you're not going to pull those really powerful, excited people to you when you're slumped over at your desk, looking down at the ground, not feeling like you deserve to be around people like that. So it's, it's really about shining your light and stepping into your power and wearing colors that make you look and feel great and powerful and taking a power stance when you walk into a room and smiling and, you know, really just being you when you begin to step into that. And for me, it's, I love to hit up Drake before I'm going to do something. (laughs) I'm obsessed. So I, when I listen to Drake, I get in a mindset that I can see my light shining and I feel so powerful. And I walk into a room like that and people are drawn to you because they feel that really positive vibe and that energy that you're putting out is real. And when you start living in your own power and your own light, people that are like-minded start coming to you. It's great. And I, I, um, it makes me think of two very different things. Um, one, when I was, uh, in Italy once, uh, an Italian, uh, woman said to me, she said, Kevin, there are no ugly people, only lazy people. And what she meant was, was I, we're talking about fashion in Italy and all this stuff. And she said, it has nothing to do with the shape of your body or your age or one certain look. It's more about, you know, uh, taking care of yourself and expressing yourself uh, in different ways. And oddly, the other thing I remembered from you, you know, sharing this is uh, a Marine Corps general who's recently retired. But when he walked into a room, I mean, he commanded literally uh, the, the, the room. And he told me that that's something that from a young age, he realized that most people just sort of walk around. They don't think he says, I'm bringing my energy. Like I want, I want to where I'm out to dinner, I'm at work, wherever I am, I'm going to just bring my energy to it and just some excitement. And, uh, it's hard to describe what's going on. Like, is it an aura? Is it like a, just body language? Is it eye contact? But um, there is a difference from people who are bringing it, you know, into their environment and just kind of phoning it in. Like you can tell, you can tell. It's about being intentional and just putting that effort and that awareness out there. And if you go to work like that every day, watch the changes that Mm. start happening. And and here's the thing. We're always teaching people how to treat us. When you walk in like that, you're teaching people that this is someone to be, you're a force to be reckoned with and people will start seeing you that way. Yeah, I love that. We're always teaching people how to treat us. That's an important one. And and you, you earlier said that, you had burst through fear a few times, career related, et cetera. And you talk about flipping the script on fear. So tell me more about that because I think fear, I mean, we all have it from time to time and I get a lot of questions about it when it comes to career changes, especially, but also big life changes. You know, how do we face that fear, but do it anyway? So I keep a list always of three different times that I've felt really scared about something, moved forward with it, and that I didn't die. I lived. doesn't matter so much that, you know, I don't know that I achieved every single goal that I had around that fear, but the fact that I went through it took me to that next place that I never could have gone to if I didn't take that step. One of them recently was an NBA player read my book, and he DM'd me on LinkedIn and said the difference between a good basketball player in the NBA and a great one is only confidence. Mm. Could you, could you meet with me? I'd love to talk to you and, and see if you can help me a bit. I felt so afraid in that moment because yes, I've written the book, but now, okay, so now I'm an author. Now I'm going to coach NBA players. I felt like a fraud. Mm. So there's this whole fraud mindset that happens to us. And I've got a chapter on that in the book. And I was really scared. What if I couldn't help him? And what if he was flying all this way to see me? And so I pulled the levers that I've taught myself. I looked at three instances in my past where I was petrified to do something and I did it and it worked out okay. I got through it and I put on my power clothes and I stood in my power of, okay, Heather, remember that you are enough. Remember your energy. Remember what you're bringing. And then I walked into this meeting still feeling very afraid, but actually walking into it made me feel stronger that I'm taking a risk and I'm going forward. Fear is not real. It's a liar. 
And when I got there, I saw a 24 year old young man Mm -hmm. holding my book, clutching to it. And I saw that he was looking for something to lean on, something to help him. And suddenly in my mind, I just thought of my son and I thought, you know what? I can do this. And I am the person that wrote this book. And you know what? I might not have every answer, but I'm sure I can help him with one thing. And if I can do that, you know what? It was worth being here. And we definitely had a great conversation and I definitely felt like I added some value to him. Yeah, that's great. And it shows, I mean, whether you're an NBA player or a CEO or whomever, like we all have these, we all need confidence boosts. We all have imposter syndrome because we're always getting to a higher and higher level that we've never been at before. And we kind of, am I going to be able to cut it this time around or at this, uh, at this level? Um, so, so much good stuff. And and I'm going to, uh, I like, always like to challenge my listeners to like take action today on something that a guest has said. And, and I'd, I'd like to end with that one saying, you know, we all talk about attitude of gratitude. They've heard me talk about that before, but this idea of today, like let's all take the time to think about three times when we faced our fears and we didn't die to use your words. Maybe it wasn't everything we expected. Maybe we didn't hit it out of the park, but we didn't die. It turned out okay. And then let's remember those times the next time we're needing to muster up uh, that courage and confidence. So Heather, how can our listeners find out more about uh, you, your work and your new book? So my website is heathermonahan.com. I have a free ebook on there. You can download to get an idea of what confidence creator is about. My book is on audible, Kindle, paperback and hardcover on Amazon. And I am on all social media platforms at Heather Monahan. Perfect. And we will put all of those links in the show notes. Heather, thanks for coming on to the LeadX show. Thanks so much for having me, Kevin.